Welcome back guys, my name is Brandon and today we have a welding and plasma cutter episode we're going to be doing. I'm going to take you on a little bit of a field trip, we're going to look at a job to show you what we need to do, then we'll bring it back to the workshop and then we'll get it underway. What do you guys set your plasma cutter to to cut certain thicknesses? I think it's an all around common thing that you just turn it up, set it for one thing, you set your air pressure as one thing, and you just run with what you got. Well, there's actually a right and a wrong way. It's all adjustable for a reason, and we're going to talk about the correct pressure and amperage settings on your plasma cutter today. We're going to do that and more, so stick around. What we've got are these tire racks, and you can see that they're kind of wobbly. These racks come with a bracket to attach it to the wall and the bracket looks like this. They just clip in, then these two holes you just screw into the wall. So if this was the wall side, it kind of just goes in like this. You know, this would be bumped up against the wall and then the screws would go into the wall. But the issue is, is that if we install these onto this leg back here, it's going to push this way out into the room and we can't have that. So we're going to modify these brackets to make it work. They have one set up in the other room. I'll show you what it looks like. And here you can see they have one of those racks all set up. And this is that little bracket. That's like 15 inches. You can see where it clicks in there. Then there's just a couple screws. And that keeps, keeps this whole thing from wanting to tip over. Apparently these shelves here are narrower than the shelves that I just showed you. So that's why I'm going to have to cut up this bracket. So we'll end up putting a bracket here and then we'll do another one down there as well. And we'll do the same thing for that second one in and we'll do the same thing for that last one down. So we're gonna need a total of six of those brackets that we gotta modify. This distance between this bracket and this wall is three and a half inches. It's actually three inches. So we could make it three, three and a half inches would work just fine. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll tell you what guys, I'm really loving this adjustable lift table. If you guys follow my Facebook and Instagram, you'll know that I just put a motorcycle on it for the first time. This thing's awesome. It's rated for like 1,500 pounds, so it'll do anything that I ever need to do on this table. So remember I said we need to be like three or three and a half. Well, I'm going to make these three and a half inches. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come back three and a half inches from here, make a mark, cut this off, save this piece. Then we're going to come over here and we're going to cut off. Yes, yeah, you can see it's continuously welded here and it's got a couple of spots here and also on the inside, another tack there and there. So. We'll clean this piece off from this piece and then weld our piece here back onto that. So this is going to be, we're going to do all our plasma cutting to all of these. We've got six of them to do. This is a 50 amp, 120, 240 volt plasma cutter. It's an inverter base, meaning that it does its uh, voltage adjusting automatically. The way it works is you've got an air inlet here and you've got a power cord. Just plug that in. It has an adapter if you want to plug it in onto 110 but we're gonna use 220 right now. This knob right here adjusts your air pressure. And this gauge right here tells you how much air pressure you have. This adjusts the amperage, and then there's a digital display that tells you what you're on. But how do you know how to set it up? Well, that's what we're gonna work on now. This is your torch. This is what does the cutting. We're gonna put on new consumables before we start. And the consumables are the pieces that, that wear out from cutting. This comes off. This is the piece that wears out mostly right here that and there's one other piece so we're going to replace that with one of these and we're going to replace that with a new one and you don't really need to replace this or this piece unless it's broken these are made of ceramic and it's literally this easy to replace the consumables drop in that piece drop in that Put that on, screw on that. That's it. That's all, all new. Depending on how dry your air is, uh, that's what really determines how long these last. 
if you have real dry air, they'll last a lot longer. If you want to know more about this plasma cutter or these consumables or anything else you see me using in this video, you can just check the link down below in my Amazon account. So the next thing we do, we've got to figure out what we're working with for materials so we know how to set up our plasma cutter. And we can use these same numbers to figure out how to set up our welder. And with my little handy thickness gauge, you can see we're at eighth inch material. And it also has little increments down here to help you determine uh, MIG wire or flux coil wire sizes. The next thing you do is you go onto my Facebook and download the chart that I have there. And it has all kinds of other in interesting welding facts. And here's that chart right there that you're looking for. And it says eighth inch, 20 amps, 30 PSI of air. And it'll give you those calculations from a 64th of an inch all the way to 7 eighths. Now I'll just turn down the air on the back of the machine with that knob. So why wouldn't we just turn it up as high as it could go and then just make our cut? That seems to make sense, right? But if this was a cutting torch, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't turn up your oxygen and acetylene as high as it would go uh, as though you would be cutting a one inch plate when you're only cutting something eighth inch. And that's because you want to optimize your machine and your consumables. If you're running in the proper air setting, you're not, not only is your compressor running less, you're using less air, you're wearing out your consumables at a much lower rate, and you're also saving electricity because you know, you're not running it at 50 amps or 40 amps when you only need to be running at 20 amps. So you're actually saving power, you're getting a better cut, you're saving your consumables, and that's a nice handy chart to get you in the ballpark. If it doesn't cut good at those settings, then you'll adjust them accordingly, but that'll give you a rough ballpark. Kind of like how a welder has the welding chart on the inside of MIG welders and flux coil welders. That's to get you in the ballpark and get you close, and then you just fine tune it from there. So there you go. That's today's handy tip, no charge. Let's get going. We gotta fabricate and cut these up. And that's the piece we need right there. So we're gonna do that to the rest of them. Now the easiest way to cut these is to use like a speed square and where the cut is made is right dead center of that consumable. So I hold this back a little bit and guide the edge of this right along the edge of that so it makes a nice straight cut and you can see that the center of where the, that orifice is where it cuts is right on that line. So it's this simple. Then you can just finish out the ends by hand. Or you can use or you can use the speed square if you want it. And that's it. That's simple. These are the six pieces that we need. Now we're gonna attach these to this. So we gotta chop these pieces off. So all these legs are all gonna be scrap junk. Oh, I didn't realize that. That bracket's in two pieces. I didn't expect it that way, but you know what? Whatever, it'll be all right. It'll, it'll come together. Now with everything cut, we just gotta grind everything. So we gotta grind all this smooth, and then we just gotta put little bevels on these, not much. And this was really the only screw up right here. 
you can see how these from the factory had a little tack holding those together. I didn't realize that and I reefed on it and broke the tack. So all the other ones, all the other ones are held together. I didn't break the tack, so that'll be easier. We'll just have to fiddle with this a little extra. When you're grinding guys, make sure you're wearing a mask like this. Uh, this is real cheap. I think this is like 10 bucks. And I wear this welding because it fits under my welding hood. Everything about this is, uh, you know, real cheap insurance for your lungs. And it's made by 3M, so you know it's a good one. And, uh, you know, safety glasses and gloves. Just, just be safe, you know. You don't want to be breathing in this stuff. You don't know what this was actually painted with. And you don't want to end up with that in your lungs, so. You can find links to all my gear down at the bottom in the description. And now we'll just go to the chart inside the door. We're going to be welding on steel. We're using flux coal wire. It says no shielding gas is required. And it even gives you a little tip. It says good for windy or outdoor applications. We're using it indoors just because. Uh, just because. We're using 30 thousandths wire. We keep coming over. And eighth inch falls right between these two of 12 gauge and 10 gauge. And it suggests a starting point of 3 and 40 and 3 and 45. So right around 3 and 45 is, is a good range. And you can see we're already at 3. And now we're at 45. You can see we've got everything ground down. And put a little bevel on all of these pieces here. That's so our weld will have a place to go. It's important that you grind all your pieces prior to it. You know, I've mentioned it before in other videos that, you know, the welding is actually the, sh the smallest part of usually metal fabrication projects. It's just like painting. You know, you do so much work that leads up to actually painting bodywork and filler and primer and all that other stuff that the actual painting part of a project doesn't take as long as the prep. So if you do good prep work on all your metal fabrication, you're going to have a real good job when it comes time to weld. So let's get going. The first thing I want to do is get this thing put back together so that I'm working with pieces that are all the same. Now everything's all universal. They're all the same now. Whenever you weld on painted stuff, it just makes a hellacious mess. So, uh, but this is how they go. This is the left side. Now, if you see how this is offset a little bit, remember when I showed you how there's like some door trim and when I was pulling on it? Well, I offset this that way just so that would clear that door trim and that'll allow you to screw it in from this side. So the fasteners would kind of be concealed and obviously they're reversed on the far end because that's the end that was right up tight against the wall. So you'd be able to get the screws in there, and then the middle are just, it didn't matter how they went, so. Now what we gotta do is wire brush them down, paint them up, and install them. All right, so we're back and we're ready to install them. And here's that one where we did that offset, right here. And that's, and that's so that clears that trim right there. Okay. That's what that offset was for. And this is the one we welded up to face outwards so we could get to the screws here because this side's against the wall. There. 
Then we just got some short lag bolts. We're going to lag it in. And just put one in. It's going right into solid wood, so that's all that's necessary. Yeah, you can see now how solid that is. That can't move now. Now, does that make more sense about that offset? Yeah. And you can see I put a tire up there just so you could check it out, but you could picture if you had all those tires up there that, you know, this could possibly tip over. So that's what these brackets are going to end up doing. And you can see now, see how close that is? It's about as close as they can get it to that wall. And the reason they wanted this super tight to the wall is you can see there's a garage door there. So that way when they pull in a car or something, they're not going to have to worry about banging into this. So that was the idea. If you guys want to find out how I price out this type of work or any other beginner welding type information, I'll put a link up above. You guys can check it out. Lots of information there, especially for beginner welders. And that's all there is to it, guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If this is something that you like, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. If you want to know about any of the materials that you saw me using in this video, I'll have a link down in the description. Be sure to hit the notification bells. New video uploaded every Friday. Until next week, guys, I'll see you then. Stay safe. Take care. See ya. Come, come.